Hello friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today I'm continuing my look back tradition where I look at back at games from every five years ago on back through history. So at the beginning of the year, I look back at the games from 2019, five years ago. And then in the middle of the year, I did 10 years ago to 2014. And now I'm doing the 15 plus years ago. So I had a little more digging to do, but a lot less games to come across as we get back and back in time uh, as far as what I'm interested in, what I owned and enjoyed. And that's kind of the concept of this video. I look back at five-year increments to see what games from those years I enjoyed, what games I still am really looking forward to playing, and the expansions of both those styles. And then I talk about maybe how well the year or years have kind of held up. A little harder to do with this video because it's going to encompass multiple years, of course. With that said, let's go ahead and get started at the games from 2009, 2004, 1999, 1994, etc., etc., on back uh, that I found on a browse through Board Game Geek uh, that I have enjoyed. So, from 2009, I've got The Resistance, which is a fun little uh, deduction party game. You can play up to, I believe, nine, maybe even ten players. We've played this one quite a bit in my groups because it plays pretty quick. And everybody kind of enjoys it as you try to figure out who's for the resistance and who is for, uh, what's the other one, the opposition? I don't remember. Uh, but basically, you're sending people on various tasks. And whether that task you know passes or fails, uh, best of five, I believe, times, that's the side that's going to win. And you're trying to make it so obviously your side wins by putting the right people on the tasking or voting against the people going in the group as you socially deduct who belongs to whom. So that's the resistance. Also from 2009 is Small World, a little area control game, uh, but you're not rolling dice. You're not really battling. Uh, you're just conquering. There's no, no defense other than putting more and more dudes on to that spot on the board. Uh, I really like it. It's also the first game I played that had varial, variable variable powers uh, as you pull out the different factions with the different abilities so every game is going to be the same and some of them might be more broke than others and it's also a game where you got to decide at what point in the game where you're just going to go into decline with your first faction and get a new powerful faction and, and start generating those points with a new faction while your old faction just kind of dwindles away uh, it's a lot of fun it's pretty easy to teach but it's got a little bit of complexity in it with the, the faction variable uh, matchups and I really like Small World, which is strange because the first couple times I didn't like it when I played it. Uh, I guess I didn't really care for the dudes on the map as much. I didn't understand the decline. And I don't know, maybe it's just a little more complex than I was ready for at the time when I first played it. But but now I'm ready for it and I really enjoy it. And I think it's a fun game to teach uh, to relatively new gamers on up. Small World. And that's it for 2009. Let's look at 2004 where... Uh, Power Grid was one of the first heavy, heavy games I played where you're managing a power grid. Uh, in my case, across the U.S., I believe there's a few other maps, but the one I played was the U.S. map. And you're basically putting out different power stations and you got to bid for them uh, to try to, to win them and add them to your grid. It's very much a point salad game. There's a lot of math in this game and a lot of managing your money resources because they're going to dwindle and then you earn them back, I think, at the end of the year. It's been a long time since I played this one. I think last time I played this was probably around 2015, so a good uh, nine years ago, but it still resonates with me, uh, that, that thought-driven um, bidding for the different uh, you know, types of power, the one that's next up, to try to earn that and then put it on the board where you can afford to and get the income from the power it generates and lots and lots of math at the end of the game for in-game scoring but power grid a lot of fun and then everybody's favorite i think uh ticket to ride uh came out apparently in 2004 and that's placing trains on a map and trying to get your uh trip objectives 
complete. Uh, you're just taking turns either drafting cards in your hand or using those cards to put the trains on the board. It's a bit of a race for certain spots, but not always. If somebody else is working on the east side of the board and you've got the west side, you know, you're not really going to come across each other too much and get in each other's way. But with more players, everybody's going to get in everybody's way. So I just like it. It's a very family friendly game. Uh, it's a classic and I'm pretty sure everybody knows Ticket to Ride. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And the last one I want to talk about for favorite games, and I'm going to jump down all the way to 1984 with Balderdash. And I don't even remember much about this game, uh, but basically you're just creating definitions for a word. And, and someone's trying to determine uh, whether yours is Balderdash or correct, I believe is the gist of it. I have not played this one, I think, probably since the early 90s. Uh, but I saw it on the list. I was like, yeah, I remember having fun with that when I was in like high school or junior high. Uh, so don't don't quote me on how to play it, but I know it's a, an old classic that people really enjoy, Balderdash, and I would love to kind of get my hands on that one again, actually, and, and play it now that I'm older. As far as expansions uh, from these years, I actually couldn't come across a single one that I've played from any of these years uh, going back as far as I think I went back to 1959 before I was like, all right, this is pretty far back to not worry about looking. So let's move on to the games I'm still excited to play from these years. And I've got a, quite a list here, starting with 2009. Again, of course, is Macau, I believe it is. It's a Stefan Feld game. Uh, it's actually been re-implemented as Amsterdam, and I really like Amsterdam. Uh, so I would just like to check out Macau and kind of play through that one and see what's different and added and how Amsterdam improved the game. Uh, so interested in checking out Macau uh, because I really like Amsterdam. I really, really like Stefan Feld. He's my favorite designer as of right now. So interested in checking out Macau. And in 2009, another one I want to check out that's also been re-implemented lately, but they didn't change the name of it. It is Shipyard, the original Shipyard. And then I think last year or maybe even this year, you know, kind of redid it. But Shipyard is a game I don't know a lot about. I've heard a lot about it. And I'm just interested in checking that one out as well. From 2004, a, I believe, two-player war game that I've heard tons of things about, uh, Memoir 44. I don't know, again, a lot about it other than everybody who's played it talks about it like it's a great two-player war game. So that's my understanding of it. It is a great two-player war game that you need to check out. I know there's lots of expansions or content added to it as well. Uh, Memoir 44, me being kind of a, a, a historian or at least a person who enjoys history and, and war history and war games. I just got my start kind of on war games and sport games. But I haven't played Memoir 44, so I'm definitely interested in checking that one out. And then uh, from 2004, San Juan, which was kind of a follow-up to Puerto Rico, which is one of my favorite games. shows up on my top 50 list, uh, or at least it did, I think, the last two times. So Puerto Rico, I really enjoy. San Juan is, I think, a re-implementation of that. I'm not 100% sure of it, but San Juan basically is Puerto Rico, but different i think and then from 2004 which i'm not sure if it's from 2004 i always thought this game was older but it showed up on the 2004 list so we're rolling with it it's axis and allies another two-player uh war gaming game but this one's a big sprawling risk style but different i think game um it's one of my co-workers favorite games uh but she doesn't own it yet at least she might she said she might buy it so we can play it um, and so I'm interested in seeing if, if that comes to pass, but uh, access and allies, I, I've never been a big fan of risks, so I've never really sought out access and allies, but I think it's more strategic and less luck. Um, so I am interested in checking out and hopefully I get a chance to before too long, um, you know, situational dependent at least. All right, moving on to 1999, we have a very popular game that just also got re-released. Seems to be a trend about 15 years, 20 years later. Uh, is Raw. It just came out with a big box set uh, upgrades and everything for Raw. Uh, it's, an, I think, an auction style game. I'm not, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Obviously, I haven't played it. Uh, but it's an auction style game. And at any point, I think during the auction, someone can call Raw. Or at some point during the game, someone calls Raw and it starts an auction. And, and you're trying to get things with your bids without bidding too much and running out of bids. Something like that. It's interesting ish to me i'm not huge on 
necessarily auction bidding games, but I'm willing to give it a try. Everybody, um, mo for the most part, talks up Raw like it's a great game. And obviously just got a big box re-release that did really, really well on Kickstarter or GameFound or wherever it was at. Uh, I didn't get in on that, but I know uh, a lot of people were excited to have that available as well. So a lot of love for Raw, so I'm willing to, to check it out as well. And the uh, last 1999 game is going to be Bus. I can't believe this game is actually that old. 1999, 25 years old on Bus. So no wonder it's been out of print for a while. Uh, and everybody is talking about it being on their grail list. I think, uh, who is it? Uh, Capstone Games, I believe, is working on a re-release of Bus. I think they have the rights. So hopefully it comes around soon. Obviously it won't be the original Splatter version. I think it was Splatter who did the original. Uh, but I know this game has been out of print and on a lot of people's grail list and uh from the gameplay i've seen of it, it looks uh interesting and intriguing as you kind of bid on actions and then so whoever bids better for each action does that action first um so it's a little bit of fighting to to make the route or move the riders or take control of other aspects of the board i think there are like five different you know positions if i recall right it's been a while since i watched the how to too but it, it intrigues me. It looks like a nice, thinky Euro-style game, and it's on everybody's grail list because it's hard to get. So for that reason, I put it on my I Want to Play It too. And then we're going to skip down 10 more years to a game I heard a lot about. I don't know if this is going to be a game for me. I don't know much about the game. It is Hero Quest. All I know is you spend a lot of time building up the game board, and then you quest through it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this one gets a lot of buzz from people's childhood from putting the board together, basically. And it's got a bunch of pieces you can buy. And, you know, people have boxes upon boxes of Hero Quest, you know, setting uh, and pieces. And I don't know. I'm interested in, in checking it out. I don't know much about the actual gameplay. I just know a bunch of people's childhoods apparently involved building the Hero Quest set. So, whatever. I'll check it out if given the chance for sure. And finally, the expansions. There's only one that I kind of was interested in checking it out and it's strange uh, it's a game i'm not a huge fan of i'll play it uh but not my really kind of a game it's too much luck dependent is Catan. Uh, i'm not a big Catan fan i got rid of my copy of it um, i could play other people's copies people have it uh but the expansion is the treasures expansion uh treasures adventures whatever <laughs> expansion sounds interesting i played the uh the marauders expansion already where you go off to the side islands uh so i'd be interested in checking out what this specific expansion adds to Catan, and, and maybe it, it makes it slightly better i don't know i'd be willing to check it out I mean, Catan is fine um with an expansion it could be better so that expansion jumped out to me the uh the treasures uh and adventures and something else expansion whatever that is i uh, didn't write it down uh, anyway, so that's that. That's my look back kind of at the games. I enjoy the games I want to check out and the one expansion in this case from 15, 20, 25, 30, yada, yada, yada years ago. Uh, do they hold up? Uh, yeah, there's some good classics in there. Ticket to Ride, Ra, as I mentioned. Uh, Small World to a lesser extent, I think. Uh, people still talk about Power Grid a bit. Um, you know, Bus, of course, is on people's lists. So, a lot of good games, I think, on this list. I don't know if any of these games are super outstanding, other than Ticket to Ride just being the classic, you know, everybody game. So this, this, at least from what I found from this set of years, probably not as strong as some of the other years uh, looking back, but pretty solid, some solid choices in this year. So those are my thoughts on, you know, 2009, 2004, 99, 94, yada, yada, yada back in time uh let me know your comments below uh what i missed from these years that you would have included on your list or maybe i just completely missed it you know i only glanced at each of these years the first few pages on board game geek i didn't go deep diving into like page 10 so i might have missed some stuff that should have been mentioned let me know and if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe below to see uh these future videos all these videos i talk about games i'll do this again next year with 5, 10, and 15 plus years ago, looking back at the uh, the zeros and the fives at that point. So follow along if you like to. And hit the subscribe, the bell. I don't know what the bell does. I've never hit the bell. Hit the bell if you want to. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Bye.